Hello, welcome to Metro Life TV and Transformation Intent. I'm glad that you have connected today. So I want to continue out of Malachi chapter 3. God's been opening some things up to my heart uh, as of late concerning darkness. And so I want to give you some encouragement and also uh, some direction as we move through this season. If you were in service Sunday or if you caught Sunday's message here on our channel, then you know that we taught out of Malachi 3, uh, beginning verses 14, all the way down through verse 18. And in verse 18, God says, I'm going to do again. You're going to again see me do what I've done before. And then I'm going to put a distinction between you and the unbeliever, between my people and the enemy's people. So I want to continue developing that. There are two passages of scripture that I'm going to refer to today in that regard. Uh, number one is Malachi 3.18, and it says, and I'm reading from the Christian standard, it says, so you will again see the distinguishing difference. I'm going to distinguish, I'm going to put a distinguishing difference between the righteous or my people and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. That being said, I want to quote to you now Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will arise on you, and his glory or his goodness, I really want to drive that home, his goodness shall be seen on you. So let's talk in Transformation Intent today about the darkness factor and the Goshen effect. Goshen. We're going to be talking more about that as we move forward in the days to come. Uh, but what's important to understand is that the principles of Malachi 3.18 and Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2 is the, are, are the principle of that when darkness shows up, in the earth, when we go through seasons of darkness, God's glory or his goodness is manifested and revealed. So when you study the great men and women of God in the word, you discover that each one of them had a dark place they went through. Many of them, most of them, just like us, have multiple dark seasons, many places of darkness. So darkness does not diminish your brilliance. That's the first thing I want to drop in you today because uh, whether, whether it's the season we are in in the earth here in the United States, whether it's the season that we've come through in the last year, uh, whether it's the places you're going through, the things you're dealing with that have you isolated, it's important to understand that darkness never undoes God's covenant. I've been talking a lot in this season about the covenant of God, and it is so essential to remember that, to realize it. Darkness does not negate. It doesn't annul. It doesn't change. It does not invalidate the covenant of God. And the Goshen effect and the distinguishing difference is God says, when there's darkness in others, I'm going to put light on you. My light will be seen on you. My light will be revealed the darker it gets in the nations, the greater I'm going to be in my house. The brighter my house is going to be. Now, we're in a time of intense uncertainty, anxiety, and fear. You hear me talk about that quite a bit. So let me personalize that in our time together today. I want to personalize the darkness dimension. Remember I said it a minute ago that every great man and woman of God uh, goes through dark places. So first thing I want to declare about your darkness, whatever your darkness is, is the darkness may have you, but it can't hold you. It may seem like it has you. The darkness may seem like it has surrounded you and taken your victory. Maybe even feels like or looks like it has stolen your dream, your destiny, your identity. I mentioned Sunday that Joseph was the one who gave Goshen to Jacob and his family. Joseph says, come into Egypt. I'll, I'll provide for you in Goshen. And then later on in the narrative, 
The scripture says that when Jacob and his family, Joseph's father and brothers and their children and grandchildren and wives and all of their possessions and their livestock, their businesses come into Egypt, when they meet Pharaoh, Pharaoh then agrees with what Joseph said. So a prophet who had been through his own 13-year dark journey, the darkness of slavery, the darkness of betrayal, the darkness of intense seasons of persecution and warfare in which God was silent and jo Joseph was isolated. He becomes the door opener and he, he prophetically opens a door to a future of protection, preservation, where though it's dark in famine, there's going to be more than enough in Goshen. It's a great place to be when you're in darkness. And what I'm telling you today is God's got a way of manifesting his goodness. You see, his glory is his goodness. Moses prays that prayer. I've told you this before, but I want to remind you, in Exodus 33, Moses says, Lord, I, I'm, I'm hungry for you. Show me your glory. The Lord says, okay, I'm going to show you my glory, and I'm going to make all my goodness pass before you. And then God begins to proclaim his name and elements of his character, who God is. God reveals who he is. What I'm telling you is that it's in our darkness that God shows up and shows us how good he is. And God's going to show you the goodness of his character. His covenant-keeping nature is going to manifest in your life in the darkness. So the darkness may, may hold you, but it can't have you. The darkness may surround you, but it can't keep you because darkness is context for the goodness of God to show up. And I'm telling you, we are in the days of God expressing the distinguishing difference between him making covenant movement in the lives of his people and manifesting covenant goodness. Yes, you may be in darkness, and it's tough when we are. It's intense when we're in darkness. But the good thing about the darkness is it doesn't diminish or cancel God's goodness. In fact, I really believe, I feel a stirring and have for a number of days now that the Lord is saying to us that it is in this present darkness that we're going to see covenant goodness in ways that only God can receive glory for and he is going to make a distinguishing difference with his people in your life. Just like Joseph, betrayal, sellout, de delay after delay after delay, frustration, lied upon, injustices, perpetrated against him. And yet through all of that, the darkness could not have him. And that's what I'm saying to you. The darkness cannot have you. There's a distinguishing difference. God said, you're going to see a distinguishing difference. And it's out of darkness that my goodness is going to be manifested. So whatever area is dark in your life right now, I'm helping by the word of the Lord to stir your faith, to provoke your expectation. That darkness is context for God's goodness and even greater goodness than we've seen. So God uses the prophet Joseph, who has been through his own intense seasons of deep darkness. Who am I talking to right now watching this video that you've been in an isolated place of deep, intense personal darkness? My assignment today is to encourage you and to let you know I'm here to forecast your future promotion is coming to your house. Promotion is coming to your house. Promotion is being visited upon your life because the darkness was preparation for God to manifest his goodness and bring you like Joseph into a place of promotion. You know, God wastes nothing. And even the things the enemy does that God didn't sin, God will redeem it. So that what the enemy, Joseph, later on in Genesis 45, looks at his brothers and he says, what you meant for evil, God turned it for our good. And so it wasn't you that did this, but God sent me before you to preserve your lives. God's got a Goshen. Goshen is that place of covenant preservation, covenant provision, covenant protection. Indeed, God's great goodness in a season of greater darkness. That's what I'm telling you today. As God's people, we can know that we are covenanted with God and there's a Goshen for you. There's a Goshen, the goodness of God. A place where God says, I'm going to separate my people from those who are not in covenant with me and I'm going to prove my covenant to my people in the presence of the darkness. 
I'm going to bless them. I'm going to, I'm going to prosper them. They're going to flourish in the darkness. I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge your faith to begin to, to seek God about this and ask him, God, show me how it is that you want to position me to prosper me even in the darkness. I made a statement, statement Sunday in the message. I said, we endured so we could advance. That's the thing about darkness. Darkness, a season in darkness is an endurance race. A season in darkness is an endurance test. But when you come through the darkness, you come into advancement. That's what I mean by promotion. God's been protecting you in the darkness. Maybe you can't see it right now, but there is covenant preservation in the darkness you're in. And there's a distinguishing mark God has set upon your life. God's seal is upon you and the enemy cannot steal from you what God has covenanted with you about. And there is a seal, a distinguishing difference, a distinguishing mark. Malachi 3.18. It's what God did for Jacob and his family when they came into Egypt in a time of famine. Please catch this. In a time of global darkness, God showed his covenant goodness and preserved them. He opened a door to a place of preservation. And while they're being preserved in the darkness, they're actually advancing and prospering. What happened for Joseph on an individual level, he now becomes a door opener to, for God to do for his family on a kingdom level, on a practical level, in perfect covenant remembrance and covenant keeping goodness with what God had promised to Abraham several generations earlier. When God makes a covenant, he can't forget it. And you're going to see the distinguishing goodness of God in your life in the presence of the darkness. So as I wrap this word today, what I'm challenging you to do is to expect that you've endured your own darkness and you're enduring the darkness that you're enduring right now to come into advancement. We've endured so we could advance. And the darkness is context for covenant goodness. And you're going to see it. And in the middle of the chaos and in the middle of the uncertainty, God's going to prove his goodness to his people. And we are not to have a retreat mindset. You're to have an enlargement mindset. You are to have a mindset that God's going to be good even in uncertain seasons. That God's not going to change his mind. That his covenant is not determined by who's the president. God makes a covenant with you and God can keep you in the darkness while he's affecting his long-term promises. And every prophetic word God's ever uttered it will never go unfulfilled. And it may not come to pass in the season you anticipated it would, like Joseph when he has those dreams at 17. I had to, I have to assume that, that in his immaturity, he doesn't understand the timing of God. What I'm saying to you is there are those right now that are wrestling over that question of the timing of God. And while you're questioning the timing of God in the present darkness, God's still going to show his covenant goodness to you. Set your expectation accordingly. You've endured so you could advance. So arise and shine. Your light is here. Light is always manifests when God's people rise up in the middle of their darkness. Final question. What's the darkness you're dealing with? Once you've identified that, prayerfully ask yourself and the Holy Spirit, what and how do I need to rise up in in the middle of the darkness. Stop asking him, why is it dark? And start asking him, what do you want me to rise up and do while it's dark so that you can show your covenant goodness? Your confession needs to be, our confession is this, God, it's dark, but we're looking for you to show up. Because it's in darkness that we rise up and you show up and your covenant goodness makes an expression that reveals your distinguishing difference. I'm gonna tell you something. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. God loves the world, watch this, but God highly favors his covenant people. And so we will again see Malachi 3.18, just like God did for Jacob and his family through a prophet who's been through darkness himself. 
And that right there, I keep repeating that because it's a word for somebody. You've been in darkness because God's going to use you to be a deliverer. There is a deliverance in the darkness. And deliverers are rising up in the darkness. God's going to open doors to covenant goodness. Because the darkness may hold you, but it can't have you.